Welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have discussed simple electromagnets and we discussed how to determine the polarities of the magnet which is formed or of the temporal magnet which is formed when you insert a soft magnetic material inside a solenoid. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss one of the applications of electromagnets and that is an electric bell. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to draw a well-labeled diagram of an electric bell and then explain the working of an electric bell. So the main parts of an electric bell are the contact screw. We have the contact, the steel spring. We have a capacitor, a gong, a hammer a soft iron core, soft iron armature, and battery and a switch. So in this case, we can draw it together. And in this case, if we want to draw this electric bell, then we must start with a connecting wire. We will draw our connecting wire like that. Then we will come and draw a battery. We will have a battery. In this case, we use a battery which gives us a direct current because we only use direct current to make electromagnets or temporary magnets. Otherwise, alternating current will not give us a magnet or an electromagnet. It will demagnetize it instead of magnetizing. So here, if I complete this uh, wire like this, in this case, this wire is going to be connected to a soft iron core, which is U-shaped. And in this case, it's U-shaped so that it forms a relatively strong magnet because we said U-shaped cause forms relatively stronger magnets than a bar cause. So in this case, if I draw this soft um, this, this soft iron core, which is U-shaped, U-shaped it means I will have some part of it here, like that, then another part here that very important for you to have the skills of drawing this electric bell without referring to anywhere else because sometimes we request you to draw a well labeled diagram of an electric bell or we draw it for you then we ask you to label it or even to identify the polarities at these points so here if we have a soft iron core like this then we can complete this wire we can complete it by current is passing down then now here it will be passing like that and is the flow of current in this case current is flowing like that and now when it comes up here it's going to flow on top then here going to flow like that in such a way that it's going to complete by flowing up then now after that we can now connect it to a support there is a support here which supports the soft iron armature and through this support we have a capacitor along this point here we have a capacitor. Remember, a capacitor looks like a cell, but it has two arms which are equal. So that is a capacitor there. We're going to see its functions later, but in short, it helps in reducing sparking effect during uh, uh, the con when the contact is being made on this electric bell. So here we have a spring or a steel spring, and then after that, we have what we call the soft iron armature. The soft iron armature runs like that. Then below this soft iron armature, it's connected to a hammer. It's connected to a hammer. And this hammer is the one now which will hit the gong. We have a gong here. The, the outer part of an electric bell that you see is called a gong. And then it is this hammer that hits it repeatedly. So in this case, we also have a conductor. 
which conducts or which connect these contact uh, to the contact screw then in this case of course we will have our this y extended to the contact the contact screw so in this case we will have a wire like that then at this point we will have a support which will support the contact screw contact screw in this case is a very important part let me draw it with a different ink this one is the one which is going to make contact then after contact is being made the soft ion core will get magnetized then it will attract the soft ion armature and then the bell will ring so in this case those are the main parts of an electric bell we can label them we can start with this this is a battery this is a battery this is a switch s this is a connecting wire then we have we can even indicate the, the direction of current here and even label the poles of this this current is flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal through the wire so here current will be flowing like that current will be flowing like that then at this point here current will be flowing like that here current will be flowing down then now when it goes there it will be flowing up here this is very important it's very important to have the skill of drawing this and even having two pole, two ends forming different poles so in this case if we want have to identify the poles formed at points call it up here and down here on this uh, soft iron core then we use Fleming's right hand rule now if we grasp the upper part we're going to have a north pole at this point north pole then if we grasp this the fingers will be pointing up and then it, this one will become the thumb will be pointing the, on the other side this will become the south pole so this is the south pole of the of the electromagnet which will be formed when the switch is closed we are going to discuss how it works but here we can even predict the polarities like that then after this we can label this one this one is called the soft ion core then this one is called the soft ion armature this is the soft ion armature then we have a capacitor capacitor is a steel spring steel spring which is very flexible this is a contact or a contact screw then at this point here where it touches this is what we call a contact so that is the how and then then we have of course a hammer here hammer then we have a gong so that is the basically the outlook of an electric bell how does an electric bell work before we look at how an electric bell work first let us discuss the role of a capacitor in this electric bell simply a capacitor is used to reduce sparking effect at the contact remember sometimes when this contact is being made it might produce some sparks so for us to reduce that then we have to regulate the amount of uh, charges flowing through this wire and we use a capacitor which will be storing excess charges instead of those excess charges causing sparking then it, they are stored at the capacitor so that is the main role of this capacitor in this cell then the contact is completed or the circuit is completed at the contact spring and the contact screw here where we have contact so that's where contact is being made now how does it work when this switch is switched on the current will flow in this conductor like in this case current will flow from the positive terminal like this then when it comes it will come to this uh, solenoid with with a soft ion core this soft ion core this solen this this current will be flowing in it like that one side will attain north pole and then the other side will attain south pole like in this case this side up here if you use framing this right hand rule it will attain north pole this one will become south pole now when this one become when this soft ion core becomes a temporary magnet or when the contact is closed 
it becomes a magnet with North Pole and South Pole, it will attract the soft ion armature. Remember, this soft ion armature is a soft ion and it's easily attracted by a magnet. So it will get attracted. When it gets attracted to this magnet which is formed, it will move together with the hammer and the hammer will hit the gong. When it hits the gong, the bell will ring. However, when it's moving together with the hammer and the soft iron armature to this soft iron core which has been magnetized, this contact here and the contact screw will break because this contact screw is fixed. So there will be a break in this contact uh, screw. Therefore, the circuit will be incomplete. So there will be no current which will be flowing in this solenoid now. After this one, after the bell has been hit once, or after the gong has been hit once, there will be no current flowing in this uh, soft iron core. And when there's no current flowing in a soft iron core, since it's a, a soft magnetic material, it will lose its magnetism because it was an electromagnet, a temporary magnet. That when there's no current flowing, it loses magnetism. When it loses magnetism, it will release, it will release this soft iron armature. When it releases the soft iron armature, the contact, it go, the, the, the steel spring goes back to the contact and the contact is made again. When the contact is made again, the circuit is again complete. This one will, will gain magnetism. It will attract again the soft iron armature. When the soft iron armature is attracted, then the gong is hit and then the contact is broken. It's released back like that and the process repeats itself until the switch is put off. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss force on a conductor carrying current.